Hello, in this lecture we're going to troubleshoot some problems that could happen with the master budget. Now, of course, this is a long process, and if we get to the end of the budgeting process being the balance sheet and it's out of balance, that could happen. And the question is, how do we go through there and find out what is wrong? And uh, one, one way we could do this is we could actually try to basically journalize and record the transactions and thereby recording the debits and credits as we go. And that could uh, help us to see where we could be out of balance. So in order to do that, if we wanted to take that approach, we could set up basically a trial balance based on what we have here. So in this problem, we were given a balance sheet here. We can journalize from the balance sheet and try to journalize this activity to get to the ending number. So let me try to just give an introduction to what that might look like. So if, if I'm, I'm just going to hide some cells over here, I'm going to right click and hide these cells so that I can have this trial balance. And I'm, I'm not going to re-input the, the numbers, but basically you're just going to take the balance sheet and you're going to put it into trial balance format. And that means removing the subtotals and putting, I'm going to put credits as negative so that it'll balance in that way. So for example, I'm just going to go straight down through here. Cash is going to be 40,000, accounts receivable 342, 248, raw materials 98.5, and then finished goods inventory 25, uh, 325.540. And then if I want to check my subtotals, it adds up to 108, 288, 108, 288. So we're on track. And then we're going to go to the uh, equipment, 600,000, less accumulated depreciation. That's a credit of a negative. I'm going to put it in as a negative, 150,000. I'm going to have my credits be negatives. And then uh, we get to the total property plant equipment and the total assets. So then I'm going to highlight these. And... Um, I'm off here, so what do we have? 1 million, no I'm not, 1 million uh, 256, so we're correct. Okay, so then we're going to keep going. We are on the liabilities, so these are going to be credits, so I'm going to represent it as a negative 200, uh, 205 for accounts payable, and then we have a negative 12 short-term liability, and again, if I add those two up, adds up to uh, 212.5. So that's the 2125 subtotal. And then we've got a long-term liability, 500,000. Not gonna put in the subtotal. But if I added up all the liabilities, not including the uh, accumulated depreciation, 7125, 7125, so we're on track. Then the long-term, no, actually, this one needs to be down here. I'm gonna add an account for income tax payable, which we will need at a later time. So then we have the common stock. I'm going to make this blue because this is the capital account. So those are in the middle. So sometimes I like to just show the fact that this is the, just the differing point between the balance sheet and the income statements. So there's the capital retained earnings 208788 and no dividends. Now we're at zeros, meaning the debits minus the credits now equal zero. So we are in balance at that time. So then what I'll typically do is then say that we want the ending balance over here. So I'm going to say that ending balance is going to equal the beginning balance plus whatever activity we will put in there. We're going to journalize the activity, basically journalize the budgeting activity. Then I'm just going to highlight this all the way down. I'm going to highlight all the way down to here. And these are all the accounts I'm going to need. So I'm actually going to delete some of these rows. And this is all we're going to need. Delete, shift up. And note that how did these zeros get here? It's just all we did was sum up. I said equals the sum of everything. All this all the way down because we're going to need some income statement accounts. Why is it stop at the balance sheet? Because we're stopping at the point in time at the end of uh, June 30th in this case. And then we're going to budget forward. So we don't have any income statements already closed out to the balance sheet. So I'm going to add some income statement accounts because we're going to need them for the budgeting process. Then if I highlight this across, then we have this. And if you want to know why they're green, I went to the home tab styles and we went to uh, when they're equal, I want them to be green. So that means I can see that uh, whether they're green or not, and it'll keep us in balance. So if, if that equals zero, we're going to have it be green. If it's not zero, then it's going to change and that'll give us a, a visual indication. So then I'm going to highlight from A to M, let go, right click, Highlight from A to M, let go, right click, and unhide. Oh, I hid instead of unhide. Let's do that one more time. I'm going to right click and unhide. All right. 
Okay, so now notice I've also added just our journal entry area. This is where we're going to enter the journal entries and post them to this section and see what happens. So if we just go through our some of our activity, you can say, well, the sales happened and we had sales of this dollar amount. And we know that part of those sales were on account and part of them were for cash. So I'm going to go ahead and post that out. So we're going to have some cash. We're going to have accounts receivable that are going to go up and the other side of it's going to be sales sales is going to be in the sales i'm going to have a credit of this number now the problem told us that 70 percent of our sales are on account that's what we're budgeting to happen so i'm going to say the negative because i want to flip the sign of this number times 0.7 and that'll say this is how many how much of those sales sales <laughs> we're going to have on account and then the difference between this minus this which i'm just going to say negative sum is going to be our plug that means that that much is cash so now the debits equal the credits and we can just journalize this transaction and, and see if it ties out to our ending balance sheet once we're done we're going to say okay cash is here and accounts receivable is here and then sales went up down here like so and that'll put us back in balance now we've recorded our sales and we can kind of check those off to our ending numbers as we go and i can kind of say over here we can say like well okay i've taken a look at this we've pretty much journalized the activity there so then what happened is we had the raw material. I'm going to, I'm going to skip down here to the raw materials. This is what we're going to produce. And here we have the raw materials that we purchased. And I'm going to make the assumption first that we purchased it all basically for cash. I'm going to adjust for that later. But right now, because we, we bought it on account. But right now, I'm just going to say we bought it. Um, I'm sorry, we're going to say we bought it 